today I'm going to demonstrate for you how to prep a vaginal uh, patient for our, for our vaginal case. So we will gather our supplies. We'll get a wet prep skin prep tray that has um, a pevidone iodine. So please make sure your patient does not have an allergy to that. You'll gather gloves, and then of course you'll position your patient appropriately before you begin. If your patient is awake, make sure that you educate him or her um, before you touch them as to what you're about to do for them, okay? So, we're gonna go ahead and open up our prep tray on our prep table using the principles of asepsis. Make sure that your paper corners do not bounce back on your prep tray, otherwise it will be contaminated. Then I'm gonna go ahead and draw my sterile gloves away from the sterile field. There are some that are provided in the kit for you already if you prefer. Either way is fine. Um, remember to perform hand hygiene before performing your glove donning. Which I have already done. Okay. I'm going to arrange our kit. These white papers, <clears throat> these white Things we'll go ahead and put underneath the patient to protect from um, getting any um, chemical burns underneath her buttocks. And I'm going to protect my sterile gloves by cuffing the drape and placing it underneath. Like so, and if you want, you can use both. Okay, and then inside the kit, we have scrub and solution. Your scrub has got a soap in it that's only appropriate for outside and not appropriate for um, mucous membranes. So your solution is what's going to be um, used internally inside the vagina. These blue things are your blotting for in between these two steps. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> So now I'm going to go ahead and pour my scrub over my sponges. And saturating them. We're going to use all six of these during our prep today. Then we're going to use a solution on the prep sticks themselves. All right, <clears throat> so first thing we're gonna do, take off the excess prep. We're gonna start at the mons pubis, okay? So we'll start here with scrubbing motions, back and forth. I'm gonna discard my sponge. And then I'm going to start on either side. And the reason we're going to start on the, on the vagina or the vulva is because this is the area where we're going to be doing our surgical case. So this needs to be the cleanest part of the surgery. Okay, once that's done, I'll discard. And go to the other side. And you do want to scrub. If you do touch the anus, then you want to go ahead and discard that sponge and get a new one. And then we're going to start back about mid-thigh or so. We're going to go up to her mid-thigh with the prep. And then maybe I'll go ahead and come down here as well. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and blot her in between the scrub and the paint portion. So take your blue blotting paper. And again, you want to lay it carefully. Maintain a sepsis install technique. And then peel it back as to not contaminate anything. You can do this twice. Get some of this excess bubbles off of her. Mm 
<clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and use our paint. So the paint portion is after the scrub. We're going to do the external first. So again, we're going to follow the same contours. Paint is just that. There's no scrubbing involved. You're just going to do like you're painting the house. Okay? Once it's brown, then you're done. I'm going to work from in to out. Okay, and I'm also going to do one final swipe down here on the anus. Okay, now comes our internal. Now, when you're separating the vulva, make sure that you can actually see the urethral orifice because usually there's going to be a catheterization involved. Okay, then we're going to go gently inside and rotate to cleanse the cervix and the vagina, swipe out towards the anus, and discard. And then our final one, make sure that this one is well wrung out. Do the same thing again, and making sure to separate the vulva. Get the urethra, gently then scrub down, and out through the anus, and then discard. And then there should be time allowed for this solution to dry on the patient's skin before draping occurs. So make sure to remove your underbuttock straight so that there is no pooling of solution underneath. And then remove your gloves, perform hand hygiene, and document what you did.